Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, new video segment dedicated for the world of AI, the topic that's becoming more and more popular. My name is Martin Petsky, Chief of Strategic Initiative at Nobi Pro Group, and today we have a pleasure to have Paul Kurtz with us. Paul, could you give a briefing introduction of yourself? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Martin. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning with you. Uh, yeah, a little background on me. I serve um, as what's called a field CTO at uh, Splunk. And a field CTO's job is to work on strategy with customers, um, helping them make sure that they can get maximum value out of their, uh, uh, out of their purchase. And it's not really a sales uh, motion at all. It's more making sure we understand the issues, challenges, and priorities uh, of a customer and, and translate that into more efficient use of, of the product. Um, I, uh, I came to Splunk uh, about three years ago. I started a company called TrueStar, which is an intelligence management uh, platform. And that was acquired by Splunk. And so I came along with the package. And prior to that, um, I spent a, a fair amount of time in the US government. Uh, I was at the State Department for a while working on hard problems like uh, weapons of mass destruction, nonproliferation issues. And then I went down to the White House on the National Security Council uh, and served as director of counterterrorism um, over 9-11. And uh, uh, around that same time, I picked up the cyber portfolio. So I've been in cybersecurity for about uh, uh, 20 some odd years now, not to date myself too much. Thank you, Paul. It's very interesting. Uh, this is my first question. I'd like to get your perspective on the trend are you seeing in the, the application of AI to improve the security? Yeah, there's, there's, it's an awesome question. And I think there, there are several ways we're seeing AI being leveraged uh, to improve uh, security. Uh, and my, just to, to, to be clear, things are happening very, very quickly in AI. And so, you know, the trends that I would identify now, you know, what, what they might be in six or eight or 10 months, um, uh, might definitely be different, but I think there are five trends that I would uh, highlight as to the application of AI and security. One is uh, AI can be used to enhance uh, threat detection and response. Uh, a second is um, uh, improving efficiency and productivity of uh, SOC operators, uh, making their life easier, so to speak. Uh, uh, automating processes that much more, and if, if you will be having anticipatory um, technology at your fingertips that allows you to do things much more quickly. The third one I would highlight would be uh, uh, proactive risk management. In other words, highlighting um, potential issues that uh, need review. And the fourth would be um, the supporting compliance and governance. Uh, yeah, so compliance and governance is uh, can be a pretty uh, tedious task, and I think AI is going to make a, a huge difference on the compliance and governance side. And then finally, um, adaptive security measures. Uh, so you know this is where I think we go really deep on AI and AI to learn what's actually happening inside uh, 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 systems and inf information infrastructure and preemptively uh, take mitigative action uh, or corrective action in order to protect infrastructure. So there's, um, there's a lot of power uh, behind, uh, uh, or opportunity, I should say, in the application of AI to improve security. My second question is, uh, the AI has become an essential tool to for enhancing security and responding to ever evolving and trend. I'd like to learn more about Splunk approach in this area. How does Splunk use AI to strengthen security? Yeah, um, so it's interesting. Um, we've, Splunk has been working with uh, the, the concept of uh, machine learning at least since 2015. 
Uh, so we're not necessarily new to the concepts of, um, of AI. And uh, we, uh, I think, see inside Splunk uh, four or five ways of which we can um, leverage um, AI more generally. Um, one is to guide assistive workflows. Uh, in other words, you know, make life easier for the SOC operator. Uh, uh, and have AI pull uh, the operator through a particular task and responsive e effort. Um, number two is uh, is using generative AI chatbots, uh, and in in that case, it's once again um, guiding the SOC operator, helping the SOC operator do things uh, more quickly and more efficiently. Uh, number three would be. Um, uh, embedding the capabilities within actual products, uh, AI products. We can talk a little bit more about that. And number four would be um, uh, the creation of AI libraries to support uh, developers. Um, you know, there's a, there's a there's a lead chain. There's a there's a depth of, of bringing AI to life, and so putting together the AI libraries is very important. And then, of course, finally, um, customizable. Um, AI, ML, uh, it, it's really important that we can um, uh, not necessarily uh, operate in a fixed space, uh, but that we uh, offer the possibility of uh, uh, leveraging AI, ML for ad hoc tasks. And I think those would be the, 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 the five areas that I would highlight that uh, Splunk thinks about when it looks at AI. I, the one thing I would say, Martin, that is also important, Splunk has recently been required by um, Cisco. Mm -hmm. And in and, and that context, one of the things Cisco is doing, if you will, if you think of the, you know, what does Cisco and Splunk look like together? Think of Splunk basically as the, the, the big, the, the, the major effort we have inside Splunk is software where Cisco is more uh, the hardware, hardware capability. And so when we think about um, uh, investment on the part of Cisco into Splunk, um, they're investing basically $1.6 billion uh, wow. into um, helping us do more. Now, obviously, the, you know, it's the, the story of how we work together but uh, a lion's share of that um, investment is going to come our way and be uh, focused on AI and ML uh, and so, uh, or generative AI to be more specific. So there's, there's a lot of excitement inside Splunk as to what we can continue to do. And just remembering that we kind of started using uh, uh, machine learning in 2015 we're now in 2024 and things are happening very rapidly. So we're, we're very bullish on where we can go uh, in the future as far as the application of AI. Yeah, you have a long story to aggregate the data. Now is next step is to create a gen AI with the data we want to aggregate. Yeah, it's a good, really interesting, but, but you know, I'm a very curious person. So could you give uh, some specific example of this integration with our product? Your product, but how are they your product? Yeah, there's a, 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 one very specific application is um, if for those of um, the, the audience that are familiar with uh, Splunk and the SPL language, it, basically the SPL language is what you use in order to you know use the product and and to train people on the use of SPL is is time consuming and costly. And so one of the first things we've done is um, uh, begin to use NLP, natural language processing, uh, to code SPL. So you can use an, you know, an SP, use a, uh, a very general statement of um, natural, using natural language in order to activate uh, SPL code. Um, that has a, a huge impact on, on companies um, and reduces the training requirements of, of personnel and makes the product much easier to use. And so we rolled that out um, uh, this year and, uh, and we're, we're finding that, you know, it's getting, imp it's improving as we go, as, as things go with AI, 
um, and NLP, uh, it, it's it's pretty fascinating to see how you can just use natural language now to to code uh, uh, or to, to draw a query. But one other that I guess I would highlight for you, just so we don't look like we just have one thing <laughs> that, that, that is important, and that is, and it's 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 similar in a way to the natural language processing we're using for for SPL. And that is a an AI assistant uh, for security. Uh, so uh, it, it basically is developing the AI or the application of AI uh, to be able to investigate faster, more quickly, um, to answer analyst questions, um, to speed up the daily workflows, uh, to save time while addressing threats more lap rapidly. Um, and this, all these capabilities are have been put together or embedded within ES, uh, Splunk ES, uh, Enterprise Security. And the one final piece that I would uh, note here is we have uh, Enterprise uh, Security 8.0, which is just starting to come out. And you'll see um, uh, a lot of integration uh, and 8.0, bringing several several pieces together. Um, so say, for example, um, rolling um, SOAR into SOAR automation uh, into the product rather than having it, so to speak, separate, it's, it's, it's embedded within uh, mission control, so to speak. And at the same time, uh, bringing in threat intelligence automatically. All those pieces come together automatically. And, and really, Martin, at the end of the day, it's about it's about um, reducing mean time to detect and mean time to respond. And we really, as Splunk, you know, it's the constant drive to bring down um, MTTD, MTTR in any way yeah. we can and, 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 improve um, the operations of, uh, of SOCs around the world. Wow. Thanks, Paul. I have a last question for you. The you know, the integration of AI in the security of offer a mini advantage, I know, but it's also raised a certain challenge. This bring me to my final question, what do you see as the main obstacle and concern to keep in the mind? Yeah, I, I think we have to remember that we're not the only ones using AI and that, that there are bad actors uh, that are out there that can use AI um, to conduct all sorts of nasty operations. And so we have we have to we have to keep that in mind. I think one of the really general one of a very general comment on AI that's fundamentally different than some of the other technologies that have been developed over the past, you know, 50, 60 years. If you, if you look at, um, you know, major um, technology developments in the nuclear space or space or, uh, 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 you know, advanced aviation, um, development of submarines, all, the, all of those types of things were investments on the part of the U.S. government or governments in order to um, bring new technology into play. When you look at IT and in particular AI, the, the government really hasn't been involved. It's all been done in the private sector, which means all of this capability is largely available to most anyone. And, and so when you take that and you take a malevolent actor who potentially has access or has access to AI, they can start to do real, real damage. I think the, 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 that is certainly a concern that we should all be mindful of. And just last week, um, the White House issued a, um, a new uh, directive um, executive order, so to speak, on, on the application of AI, which is, which is very fulsome. And it, it notes that, you know, that the possibility of malevolent actors um, using AI. But my personal view um, in, in the end is that because of the speed at which we can begin to address problems, it's going to make life much harder for adversaries. 
Uh, but this, the, we have to be mindful that AI is happening faster than any other uh, major development that we've had around, you know, yeah. avionics or nuke power or any of those uh, type of uh, uh, capabilities. This is happening in 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 very much in real time. Uh, this is a um, a, um, a modernization uh, development that you know pales in comparison to everything we've seen in the past. Let's conclude this uh, video segment about the AI. Thank you very much, Paul, for your time and your sharing experience. It's very amazing. Martin, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. If we have any question about this video, we create a form for your question. Please click on the link in the description of this video access. On November 14, Paul and I will be hosting a live Q&A webinar where we'll answer your question. Thank you and see you soon.